Robert Gagne's theory of instruction has provided a great number of valuable ideas to instructional designers, trainers, and teachers. But it is really useful to everybody. During this presentation, we'll take a lot of time to explore the three areas of instruction, taxonomy of learning outcomes, conditions of learning, and lastly, events of instruction, which is where we're gonna spend a lot of our time, where we'll discuss Gagne's nine events of instruction. You may not be familiar with this particular theory now, but I can assure you by the end of the presentation, you will be implementing new tools inside your classrooms and professional business offices. Gagne described the nature of an instructional theory as an attempt to relate the external events of instruction to the outcomes of learning by showing how these events lead to appropriate support and enhancement of internal learning processes. Taxonomy of learning outcomes is broken up into five major categories of learning, verbal information, intellectual skills, cognitive strategies, attitudes, and motor skills. I will elaborate on these some more just to give you a better understanding of each. Verbal information is Gagne's category in the cognitive domain for declarative knowledge. It refers to the body's organized knowledge that learners acquire from formal education, books, and television. Intellectual skills are the equivalent of procedural knowledge and are divided into five subcategories, discriminations, concrete concepts, defined concepts, rules, and higher order rules. Next, we have cognitive strategies, which consists of numerous ways by which learners guide their own learning, thinking, acting, and feelings. Next, Ghani defined attitudes as acquired internal states that influence the choice of a personal action towards some class of things, persons, or events. And lastly, let's define motor skills. Ghani was referring to a precise, smooth execution of a performance such as dribbling a basketball or serving a tennis ball. Now let's move into the conditions of learning. According to Gagne and Briggs, in order to plan what learning conditions should be present in instruction, we must first categorize learning goals according to the outcome they represent. From the standpoint of an instructional designer or teacher, this is gonna entail some homework. The instructor has to determine what result is desired. When it comes to verbal information, we must draw attention to distinctive features by variations, print, or speech. We must present information so that it can be made into pieces. Provide a meaningful context for effective encoding of information. Provide cues for effective recall and generalization of information. Now let's talk about the learning conditions for intellectual skills. First, call attention to distinctive features. Stay within the limits of working memory. Stimulate the recall of previously learned component skills. Schedule locations for practice and spaced review. And lastly, use a variety of contexts to promote transfer. Let's move on to cognitive strategies. We must describe or demonstrate the strategy. Provide informative feedback as to creativity or originality of this strategy or outcome. Let's get into attitudes. Establish an expectancy of success associated with the desired attitude. Assure student identification with an admired human model. Give feedback for successful performances. And lastly, let's go on to explore learning conditions for motor skills. Present verbal or other guidance to cue the executive subroutine. Arrange repeated practice. Furnish immediate feedback as to the accuracy of the performance. Encourage the use of mental practice. I hope by now you have a better understanding of Gagne's instructional theory. But lastly, I would really like to take some time to discuss Gagne's nine events of instruction with you. I believe it's imperative that all business professionals and teachers become aware of this. It can make a huge difference and impact on the learning and training outcomes of your students and your employees. So let's get right down to it. The first instructional event is gaining the attention of your audience. Next, inform the learners or the trainees of the objective. Tell them what they will be able to do or accomplish after training or learning. The third instructional event is to stimulate recall of prior learning. Ask the learners or trainers to recall previously learned knowledge or skills. Then pre present the content. Display content with distinctive features. Provide learning guidance. Suggest meaningful tools. Elicit performance. Ask the learners to perform. Provide feedback. Give informative feedback. Assess performance, require additional learner performance with feedback. And lastly, enhance retention and transfer. Provide a varied practice and spaced review. There are many ways to teach, but it is clear that with Gagne's nine events of instruction, every step in learning is covered. 
including more instructional events in your teaching or training than is necessary will likely lead to boredom. So I would recommend that you stay within Ghani's nine events of instruction because the lack of will lead into inadequate learning or no learning at all. So if you want to be sure you're teaching or training to the best of your ability, following these instructional events is key. I hope you're able to take a lot of this information back with you and implement this system that Gagne has created. I believe that it will be very beneficial to your trainees and your students. Thanks for listening, and I hope you learned a lot.